We keep wanting to lay with the devil and date the Lord. We lay with the devil at night. We we date. We um. We have rendezvous with him. We screw around with him at night. But by day, we date the Lord and have lunch with him every once in a while. Because we don't want to lose out on the Lord. But we sure can't let the devil loose. Mm, mm, mm. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to do right. And that's the attitude. It's like, hey, I got God needs. Lord, thank you for mercy. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Don't leave me, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you. I need thee every hour. Oh, pressure. Oh, come on. And we play the two against the middle. But see, God ain't no patsy. He's not going to be played. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's what the Bible says when it means God shall not be mocked. I, ooh. Okay, now, moving right along. I'm trying to keep this as sweet and gentle as possible, but we got to tell it like it is. All right. Now we're going to move on to the next, the next Galatians. Thank you, Lord. Galatians chapter 5. Okay. Galatians chapter 5. This is where a lot of you think it's just about sex, getting high, getting drunk. Works of the flesh. Sin. Right? All right. Now, when you think of sin, you think of what? Adultery, fornication, stealing, lying, uh, bearing false witness, being... Uh, uh, anyway. Okay, let's go on with this. Um, now, bless your word, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Starting at verse 16. I know this a little this is a little lengthy, but it's very, very necessary. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. I can never leave that sentence alone. I could not win. Listen, I could not win the national tournament because of the flesh. I could not do the things I would. I would have been able to, but I could not because of a stupid choice on my part. You hear me? So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifested to these. Adultery. We know that. Fornication. We know that. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Let's go to uncleanness for a moment uncleanness is things that are impure they're they're underhanded they're dirty they're slimy they're wicked they're evil that's uncleanness lasciviousness lasciviousness is dealing with uh lustful issues things that have to do with enticements and seduction and okay moving right along and lies can be a form of seduction. Manipulation can be a form of seduction. Control, yeah, by narcissists. Now, listen to the uh, next one. Idolatry. Now, a lot of us, we get idolatry. You know, we think of this little statue and we're paying homage and we're putting fruit on it. No, 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 back up. Some of your idols are cell phones. You can't have dinner with your family without the phone being in your face the whole time. You can't go to church without a call coming. You got to leave the church to answer a call. Come on, give me a friggin' break. That's idol worship. Some of you idol worship is the internet and what the internet offers you. Hmm. I'm not going to go into detail. The ugly folks know who they are. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about now. Moving right along, let's go to witchcraft. 
Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says, for those of you who think it only pertains to tarot cards and Ouija boards and, and mediums and psychics and all of that, okay, but go down a little further. Witchcraft, the Bible says, rebellion is as witchcraft. Think on that, Selah. Hmm. All right, moving right along. Hatred. We know what that is. That's self-explanatory. Some of you have racial hatred. Hmm. Variance. You're flaky. Just flaky, flaky, flaky. Just undepend. You don't know. People don't know if you're going to be up one day, down the next. You're just all over the place. You, you know, the Bible says an unstable man. Um, excuse me. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Variance unstable emulations yeah 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 you do that i can do it anything you can do i can do better moving right along wrath strife seditions seditions always stirring up stirring that pot getting arguments going having this one fight against that one yeah you know i heard you know what he said he said that about you i wouldn't take that if i were you just instigating always stirring up mess all right that are uh, that seditions. So I'm showing you the works of the flesh. Heresies. Heresies. Uh, Jesus isn't Lord. Oh, really? That's heresy, baby. Because he's Lord. He's God incarnate. All right. Um, en uh, envyings, murders, envyings, jealousy, all that. Murders, drunkenness. Yeah, you think you can drink? Well, okay, whatever. But why are you drunk? Revelings. Getting out there, just raising all kind of unholy hell at parties, just, just anyway, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not, let me repeat that, they which do such things shall not, let me repeat that, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. You notice that's the first word it uses, love. All this, all righteousness, the prophets, all this is founded on love. Why? Because God is love. And everything we do should be motivated by love. If it's not, we're like sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal, baby. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You'll get the drift. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Come on now. It's an upward climb because the whole time we're walking with God, we are to crucify the flesh. We are to kill our desires. We are to cast down imaginations and every high thought that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. We have to do everything in our power and the power we don't have, we have to pull on the power of the Holy Spirit. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Mm. Okay, I'm not gonna keep going. This message could last hours. That's how deep this message is. But for those of you who are so given to your appetites, you see chips, you want to eat chips, you see ice cream, you want to eat the whole gallon, you want to see a bottle of liquor, you want to drink the whole bottle of liquor. Listen, those are physical appetites. But let's talk about the flesh, the appetites of the flesh, pride, 
I'm going to overdo you. I'm going to talk you down. I'm going to make you look like a fool. I'm going to get you back. I will retaliate. I'll be back. And I'm going to tear your behind down to the ground. Think about it. Think about it. You get an opportunity on a job. Some of you are way up there in, in, in the corporate ladder. And you got people, you got workers that have really made your job heavenly. But what do you do? You take all the credit, get all the glory, take all the money, and you run, baby, run. And you leave those people that made it possible for you, you leave them in the dust. And you never once put a word in for them. You never once think at them. You never once reach back to pull them up with you. Because it's all about me, baby. Me, myself, and I. That's selfishness. That's another work of the flesh. There's a whole lot of stuff that the flesh deals with. The Bible gives a quick soliloquy, so to speak, or a quick summary. But I'm telling you the works of the flesh, the list is almost ad infinitum. Because the flesh is nasty, it stinks, it's ugly. God don't like ugly. Bad English, but you know what I mean. Think about it. What is ugly about you? What is stupid about you? What is foolish about you? What is unwise? What, what are you wasting away? Be careful. Be very careful. Because... Every choice has a consequence. Every consequence has a residual effect. And there, it ripples out throughout your life. There are grown men packing groceries at the grocery store at 78, 80 years old because of choices they made back then. Choices that were not in God's will. Some things they could have done better. And they might have lost because of the of doing the right thing, but because they chose to win, they lost in the long run. Some of you cheat your way through life and you get over like a fat rat. And you think, well, who's looking? Nobody knows. Hey, it's for my it's for the taking. I'm gonna take it. You keep on taking, baby. See. I like the promise in the Bible that says your latter will be better than your former. But some of you, you get your former and you get it all. It's all good at the beginning because you're just taking it at all costs, at any cost. No matter who you got to stomp over, run over, or push back, you will take yours, baby. But you don't realize there's a consequence. God is keeping the books while you're out there booking, partying, and having a good time and living it up high on the hall, God is booking. He's looking and booking. And there comes a time where you have to pay your debt. He will not only require it of you in hell, he will require it of your behind right here in the land of the living. And you will realize one day you'll look up and say, I have written a check that my behind cannot cash. And then you pay through the nose for the rest of the years you have on this earth. You either end up alone or you end up with people hating you or you end up uptight with a nasty, angry attitude because you have all the ugliness from within is now spewing without and it's just spewing over everything and everything you touch turns to crap. Mm. Okay, I'm not trying to be... Uh, morbid. I'm really not. I'm just trying to paint a picture of how we don't realize these sins, these sins, these, you know, what we call little baby sins, little white lies, little, no, 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 no. You can't run over people to get above. People are not your, your, your ladder to climb up on and shove to the side and kick to the curb. Some of you that run this country, you may stumble on this video. I don't know. But what are you doing up there? What lies are you backing up? Whose treachery are you covering up? 
for the sake of the almighty dollar at the expense of lives and health and people suffering from cancer and 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 human trafficking and drug abuse and but but you're making out like a fat rat. So oh well, they dumb enough to go for it. I'm smart enough to cha ching. Let me stop because I'm telling you, I could preach on this for five hours straight and not run out of things to say. I hope you heard enough. I should talk long enough. God bless you. I'm ending this word. And if God gives me anything else to say, I'll just put it throughout the week on other videos. God bless you. And please, if you're caught up, if you see yourself in everything I've said and anything I've said, Ask God to forgive you. Do a 180 degree turn, a reverse of an about face. And, st and get on God's plan, stay on it, and leave all the little stupid distractions Satan has for you to destroy you with. Leave all that alone. There's no good that will come out of it. No good whatsoever. Hmm. A man that wins the whole world but loses his soul. No, no, you don't want to be that. Okay, I'm done. I got to stop. God bless you.